Okay, so section 4.3 is mass in the metric system. <clears throat> so we looked at imperial, now we're going to look at metric. Metric, think of the root word as meter. So we're thinking about centimeters, kilometers, meters, and kilograms. And so everything is multiplied by tens or thousands or by hundreds, things like that. So let's look at how multiples of 10 work. So if I'm starting off with my meters, this could be like, um, for instance, grams. And if I go up to say kilograms and higher, this direction I am dividing by 10 or whatever my conversion factor is. From grams to kilograms is actually dividing by 1,000. If I go this way, for instance, from grams to milligrams or meters to millimeters, now I'm multiplying. So if I'm going this way, I actually multiply by, and from grams to milligrams is 1,000. So you multiply by 10. Every time you do go up one unit, one measurement, it's a multiple of 10. So from meters to decimeters to centimeters to millimeters, it's all multiplying by 10. So as you get smaller forms of measurement, you're going to multiply because you're having, having more of them. If you're going to larger forms of measurement, you're going to have fewer of them, like a, a kilometer is a huge amount of space. A meter is not that much. So as you get more and more of them, you're going to divide because you're getting fewer of them. So let's look at some common conversions. These are also included on your <clears throat> data sheets. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. One gram is a thousand milligrams. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. One meter is a hundred centimeters. One kilometer is a thousand meters. And one ton, this is a metric ton, not like the imperial ton. An imperial ton is a thousand pounds. This metric ton is a thousand kilograms. So a little different. And the ton is actually spelt differently with an N-E. Okay, so let's look at some common conversions. First of all, I'm uh, converting 2.5 meters to millimeters. So let's look above. Meters to millimeters. I'm multiplying by 10 each time. So by 10, 100, by 1,000. So I'm going to multiply by 1,000 to get to millimeters. Or you, convert, you could convert the meters to centimeters. So timesing by 100. And then convert your centimeters to millimeters by timesing by 10. Either way, you're multiplying by 1,000. Either you multiply by 100 first, and then 10, or just multiply by 1,000 right at the very beginning. So remember when I'm multiplying or dividing, you just move the decimal place. And you move the decimal place by how many zeros there are. So here there's one, two, three zeros. So I move it one, two, three to the right because I'm multiplying, making it bigger. So I get two, five, and then I fill in these extra spaces with zeros. So 2,500 millimeters. You would get the same answer if you multiplied 2.5 by 100, you would get 1, 2, you'd get 250, and then timesing by 10, you'd add another zero, so you'd still get to 2,500. This is just a little bit quicker. Now, centimeters to kilometers, let's see here. So I'm starting off with centimeters, and I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to divide this time, and I'm going to divide by how many jumps there are. This is a good kind of little line to keep, um, keep in mind. So millimeters to centimeters, and so on. So I'm going to be one, two, three, four, five, six different spots to get from millimeters to, cent to kilometers, six different spots. So dividing by 10 six times means I'm going to divide by 10 six times with six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's one, two, three, one, so a million, dividing by a million. You could convert centimeters to, what, what, what's the most normal, well, meters, I guess. Convert to meters, and I know that there's a hundred, so I'm going to have to divide by a hundred. Then you could convert meters to kilometers by dividing by a thousand. Either way, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So how do they get six? Let me see here. So centimeters, ah, because I'm starting with centimeters, not millimeters. So I shouldn't have six, I should only have five, right? I counted one extra one. So I'm starting at centimeters. And I'm going one, two, three, four, five zeros. See, it's a good, good idea to double check yourself. So that's only a hundred thousand, not a million. So now let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to divide, which means I'm taking my decimal place, which is at the end of the number, and I'm moving it five places to the left this time because it's getting smaller. One, two, three, four, five. Put my decimal place there, and I fill in these extra spaces with zeros. So I end up getting. 0.0, 0, 0, 
one, two, five, and this is kilometers. It's not going to be very big because 125 centimeters is quite small. So when I'm converting it into kilometers, it's going to be a very small fraction of a kilometer, which it is. Okay, let's look at what measurement unit would be most appro appropriate, gram, kilogram, or ton for the following objects. So we have a moose, we have a mouse, and we have a kitten. Again, the same kind of things we had before. So if I'm looking at these types of things, a ton, again, would be more appropriate for a moose because it's quite large. A mouse is very small, so maybe a gram. And a kitten would probably be better to use a kilogram because a kitten can, be, can weigh a few kilograms, right? Okay, let's look at an, an, uh, an example here. So if a vitamin C tablet contains 500 milligrams of ascorbic acid, how many grams is one tablet? So I'm converting this to grams, first of all. So I have 500 grams, or 500 milligrams, and I need to convert that to grams. How many grams is one tablet? So the way I do that is I look at my conversions. I'm saying milligrams to grams. Okay, let's look above again if we get stuck. So milligrams to grams, I'm going this way, so I'm dividing. And I'm dividing by one, two, three, I'm dividing by 10 three times. So move the decimal place one, two, three. So I end up getting 0 0.5 grams. Another easy way to remember is to, whenever you see the word milla, milligram, that's by a thousand. Milla means a thousand, like millipede has a thousand legs. So if I remember that, then I can say, okay, so my conversion factor is a thousand. I'm going from milligrams to grams, which is a larger measurement, which means there's going to be fewer of them. I'm going to have to divide and divide by 1,000. How many kilograms is one tablet? So now I'm going from grams to kilograms. Again, you can check out your chart if you get stuck. Grams to kilograms. So I'm dividing by one, two, by a thousand again, by ten three times. <clears throat> again, you can look at kilo, and kilo means a thousand as well. So if you're looking at your um, form of measurement, which is kind of your reference of grams, um, we are dividing. And again, we're dividing by a thousand. So I have 0 0.5. I'm going to take my decimal place and I'm going to move it one, two, three places, one for each zero. I'm going to fill in these spots with zeros. And I usually like to put a zero before the decimal place as well. So 0 0.0005 0, 0, 0, kilograms. So how many kilograms is one tablet? 0 0.0005. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's only going to be 500 milligrams, which is quite a small amount. So in kilograms, it's going to be very small, quite a small fraction. All right. When converting between metric and imperial for mass, use the conversion factor that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. One kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. And we all know that one kilogram is also equal to 8,000 grams. So that means that a thousand grams is actually equal to 2.2 pounds. We're going to use this conversion factor in this question to solve. So let's see, you're making a cheesecake. <clears throat> the recipe asks for one and three quarter pounds of cream cheese. And when you go to the grocery store, you find three sizes, 250 gram block, a 300 gram tub, and a 400 gram tub. And you got to figure out, well, what am I going to buy here? Two of these maybe, or four of these, or three of these, to get like the right amount, right? So let's look at how much each of these are in pounds. Because that's what my recipe asks for. So first thing I would do is I would take my recipe, and I would say that one and three quarter pounds is equal to 1.75 pounds. Now I'm going to take my 250 gram block. So I'm going to do my first one, 250 grams. Remember, I want to cancel off my grams because I want pounds. So pounds on top. And for grams, my conversion factor is 1,000 grams. And I have 2.2 pounds on top. So the best thing to do here is to take 250, so my grams are going to be gone, 
take 250, I'm multiplying by 2.2 dividing by 1000. So I get 0.55. So you multiply by 2.2, divide by 1000. You get 0 0.55 pounds. That's for the first one. Now let's look at the 300 gram tub. Same, same thing, I want to convert it to pounds. So my 300 grams is going to be equal to 2.2 pounds over 1,000 grams. So again, I do the same type of thing. I take 300, and remember my grams are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with just pounds. So I take 300 times by 2.2 and divide by 1,000. And I'm left with 0 0.66, and that's in pounds. And my last one here, my 400 gram tub, I'm going to do the same thing. So I have 400 grams. I'm going to multiply. Each one of these things is being multiplied by 2.2 pounds over 1,000 grams. Again, I want to get rid of those grams and just be left with pounds. So I have 400 times 2.2 divided by 1,000. And I'm left with 0 0.88. I need... 1.75. So if I look at the first one, 0.55, if I bought two of them, so times two, I still wouldn't be at 1.75. Well, let's look at the next one. If I had 0.66 and bought two of those, I still wouldn't be at 1.75. So let's look at the last one here, 0.88 times two. Okay, so if I buy two tubs, or two, yeah, two tubs, then I have 0 0.88 times 2, which was 1.76. So that's what I want to do. I want to buy two tubs because that's going to be enough for my cheesecake. So when converting, just be, be, be clear if you're going to a smaller form of measurement, when you multiply, and a bigger form of measurement, you divide. And always use your data sheets. I think most of these are on your data sheet. If not, you might want to write some of these down. Um, use them for your assignments and your tests and things like that. Because you'll be given most of those on the, on the, um, on the provincial exam.